A convict describing himself as the grandson of a mafia don is given a Senate panel an inside view of the workings of organized crime. Raya McLaughlin reports. Vincent Charles Teresa has 28 years experience in the criminal world. He was involved in illegal gambling, loan sharking, and he trafficked in stolen cars, credit cards, and securities. Teresa, now serving a five-year prison term, gave the Senate Investigation Subcommittee the benefit of his wide-ranging knowledge of the underworld. When you speak of, of the, and the mob, when you speak of that, are, are you speaking of a definite ring of group of people who are engaged in professional crime, as you have described throughout your testimony? Yeah, I'm talking about a definite syndicate operation tied up all over the country and outside of this country too that strictly starts with gambling it all starts with gambling. all starts with gambling without gambling they got nothing and you say they cannot operate without the police knowing about it they cannot operate without it and do you do you find that they do have actually have police protection where they operate positively are they confined to any one ethnic group yes they're all in one organized... Uh, no, you don't get what I mean. I'm talking about are the Italians, Irishmen, Polacks, or no. Germans, or what? Are well, they, uh, are they confined the to any one nationality? The bulk of them are Italians. Uh, there's no question about that. I but, see. But uh, the Jewish people, that uh, some of the most successful bookmakers in the country are Jews. Yeah. Are they top people in the organization? Some of them are, yes, sir. Some of them are. Yes. So it is generally... Uh, it was originally, as I understand it, it was the Mafia, which was strictly Italians. Right, years ago. But now then it has expanded somewhere. Some others, other nationalities, are in actually in the organization. Right. Teresa said why he decided to tell all about his former colleagues. Uh, the FBI uh, convinced me that I was a fool, and they were 100% right. They were doing it to me, and not just in the federal cases, in the state cases. They had informers going in on me and making it miserable for me. Uh, they wanted to give me 100 years in a case up in Boston. They convinced me that it was just a question of time before they killed me. And they were right. If I didn't do what I was doing now, I mean, I would have eventually get killed in prison. That's the, that's the final judgment and that's disposition, right. is it, of this mob? That's it. Get you out of the way completely, so you don't cause no more trouble. Very well. You why, uh, why did they want to do that to you? You were a pretty good uh, operator for them, weren't you? But my people went to jail. Henry Tamilio and Raymond Patriarca were in jail, see? I see. Uh, before I went away. So I had no one fighting for me anymore out there. If that happens, can't you make a deal with another mob outfit and get in with them? No, you can't trust them. They were... Shady bunch of characters. <laughs> <laughs> the Justice Department today announced creation of a special strike force to probe organized crime's penetration of financial circles. Here is Eric Severide's analysis. Call it the Mafia, Cosa Nostra, the Syndicate, or the Outfit, whatever you wish. There's one big gang running organized crime in America. So said one convicted crook before the Senate subcommittee today. The same thing was said ten years ago to the same subcommittee. Nothing much seems to have changed. We've been told repeatedly by various sociological authorities that the root cause of crime is poverty. Obviously not where the vast areas of organized crime are concerned. Members of the syndicate do not stand in breadline. 